So, tell us, what has happened for Disney this last week with the board and everything? What were the news? Well, what's your interpretation of it? And finally, well, as, how does as, it fit with your FTX theory? As, as the, uh, the Super Chat pointed out, you know, we have one of two things happening. So the first thing that's happening is actually, and they're, in my opinion, they're completely directly linked, is we had the surprise announcement uh, that Susan Arnold uh, is no, will no longer be the chair uh, and she's stepping down from the board and that they are not going to appoint anyone new. They're actually going to up one of the current board members uh, you know, a, you know, who is a gentleman who's currently, you know, Mark Parker, who is the executive chairman of Nike. And they also stated they're not going to expand the board to let anybody else in. So basically, the current board without Miss Arnold, uh, with Mr. Parker, now the new chair. Uh, and if you recall, these were everyone except Miss Arnold had essentially been appointed by Bob Iger, right? And so now we're just having a Bob Iger cabal with no one to challenge it. And they specifically said they're going to not allow a new, a new chair. They're just going to have 11 uh, board openings before there were 12. And directly on the same, in, a, in the same press release that they announced Susan Arnold will no longer be the chair, they announced uh, Disney does something that a Disney Insider emailed me and said, this is a little unprecedented, uh, unprecedented for us. But they sent out a pre in the press release, they said, and there's this uh, this proxy battle beginning by some, uh, an investor who wants a, 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 a seat on the board and we strongly urge the shareholders to not support him. What? I mean, I didn't even know about this. And they're putting it in the press release, right? And they're telling us, don't vote for this guy. Don't let this guy on the board. And who is this guy? And and this guy is is a gentleman, uh, you know, who is who's uh, Nelson Peltz, who is uh is one of the leaders of Trion Group, which is a major major investor in Disney. And he has come out aggressively saying that the Disney needs an independent. Uh, uh, a member of the board, he hasn't necessarily said it's because Susan Arnold is gone. But here's here's the thing. So people don't always make the connections. Why does this Trion group matter? And who's this, this Peltz guy? Well, it turns out that Mr. Peltz and Trion group uh, were heavily invested in Procter & Gamble, right? To the point that Mr. Peltz himself has been a board member of, of Procter & Gamble until just a few months ago, right? And do we recall where Susan Arnold worked before Disney. She was the president of Procter & Gamble. So a little bit of a connection there, which and the very fact that it happens on the same day and in the same press release suggests that those are causatively linked. That when Ms. Arnold was told, you're going to have to leave, right? And I believe she was told you're going to have to leave. Uh, the current official statement they put in the press release was, well, there's a 15-year limit, 10-year board Never heard of this 15 year limit that might be theirs in some guideline somewhere but uh, as 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 i said yesterday on jason hunt's channel it's so it's a lot it's a lot more like uh you know parlay in uh in in uh pirates of caribbean that you know are are those are those rules or are they guidelines right the pirates code right i've never heard of this 15 year thing and and it, it's very surprising to me that when susan arnold got the chairmanship of the board just a couple of years ago, no one mentioned, well, she's only going to be here for a couple of years because we have a 15-year ironclad rule that someone has to leave. It's the first time I've heard of it, right? Seems like a very convenient thing to pull out uh, pull out and say, you're out now. Uh, you know, And why is she out was because uh, Bob uh, uh, Chapek was her protege. And we've talked about my theories as to why Mr. Chapek was let go because he couldn't be allowed to find certain uh, financial shenanigans, uh, in my opinion, related to FDX to come out. And so when her protege is removed, she remains a threat because obviously, you know, this was her guy. And so the board, who, in my opinion, is trying to cover up something big like FTX, needed to get rid of her, too. So they do. And immediately her allies uh, say, what, what the hell is happening here? Because I'm sure she called them and said, look, guys, I'm, they're going to they're pushing me out and I got to go. Right. And and then the Trion group said, wait a minute, you're our person. I've always wondered who is the person that pushed Susan Arnold? To the chairmanship, it had to be investors. Just like someone had to be pushing this dark horse Bob Chapek to be the uh, the CEO. Someone else outside the system had to be pushing it. So it looks like it was this Trion Group. And so when they've lost, so she lost her guy in Chapek. Trion Group loses their woman in in uh, in Susan Arnold. So then they decide, okay, it's time to get aggressive. We need to get one of our people back into the system. So they launch this uh, this aggressive uh, move to to get themselves voted by the shareholders into the board. 
And on my Patreon, one of the Disney uh, employees sent me a PDF of a, of, of a file. Uh, of a file that Mr. Pelt is using uh, uh, to explain all of his arguments against Disney. So if any of you are members of my uh, Patreon, go to it. It's very detailed. It's a PowerPoint, actually, about 30-slide PowerPoint, very detailed of all the the accusations he's making against the board for incompetence of his management. Uh, he's not claiming FTX because, again, that's not public, and so make that claim would, would make him sound like crazy conspiracy theorists. But he's got more than enough actual mismanagement uh, of, of the company on, on those uh, on his on his case that it's it's worth looking at. So yeah, so that so that is what has happened. Here. These two things have happened, and I have believe that all of this is linked again to the FTX theory. It lines up directly with it, as as one of the one of the people wrote on on the super chat. The very fact that they will not let an outsider uh, come in and take that uh, take that role uh, means they cannot allow anyone to see what's happening inside of Disney. It's the same thing when they uh, sort of soft and uh, soft announced or hard announced on, on, on the trades that Christine McCarthy, the CFO is positioned to be the next CEO, which she's not in line of succession at all. And, and no one in Hollywood expected her. She doesn't have the connections in the industry to have that role. Bob Chapek barely had the connections. And this woman's a pure financial analyst. Chapek was at least a manager of a, of a division. So they can't let anybody outside of their internal cabal see the books. And so they're locking it down. To me, that just lines directly with my FTX theory or something of that nature, something very scandalous that they can't let anybody else in. And now, and this is the last thing I'll say, and now we're get, getting the beginnings of the Star Wars rebellion. The tree, the Treon group is rising up and beginning the rebellion against the emperor. And so I, I said on my Patreon for a long time, and I said this on the show, I had thought that Susan Arnold was the Palpatine that put Darth Vader, Chapek in her place and was machinating things. Turns out Susan Arnold isn't Palpatine. She's Mon Mothma. She's Mon Mothma. She started a rebellion. And this, is, this isn't this is going to go away. Uh, even if this gentleman doesn't get the, the, the seat, he's starting an investor war that's not going to stop now. Uh, the investors have publicly come out and said, we don't like this way this company is being managed, and you're not going to keep us out from knowing what's happening. It's beginning. This Trion group, and this is the big question I'm sure many are wondering, uh, and we are also joined by uh, Tom now. Hey, Tom. Good morning. You. Welcome. Uh, but getting back to uh, to the Trion group, because you all you obviously have Iger with his aspirations. You have all this make a better tomorrow stuff at Disney. You have a lot of as as um, ESG, a lot of DEI all of this kind of thing where, where does this other group stand on these matters are they not completely ass taken by them or are they in it for the profits i mean they're in for the profits i mean that that's that's what the that's what that's what the uh, powerpoint seems to show their their whole concern is everything that the board is saying is you know not working right and, and that includes the dei that includes all of these these things the, their whole thing is this board is no longer focused on making money and is now being is now you know, not even transparent. So we don't know as investors, we have our, we, we are owners, part owners of this company. We need to know what the hell's happening and you're not telling us and you're making public statements and all these policies that that don't seem to have follow through or don't seem to be working. So we need to have someone inside figuring out why you're doing this and how we can get you on track, right? So that Trion Group doesn't seem to have any interest in pushing DEI, uh, un, un, unlike BlackRock, which also took a black eye this week because they just fired 500 people right so the first time they've fired anybody in, in since 2019 so things aren't working out for them either 